Good afternoon. If you are just joining us, we are talking about a, a tornado in progress north of St. Augustine in St. John's County, Florida. You see the iconic hook here. Let me mark that off and we will see that. You can see the iconic hook right there. So again, it crossed I-95. And again, this is a confirmed tornado. I'll go back and show you some of the, the extra data a little bit ago. And you can see here... Uh, that blue that is the tornado debris signature uh now it looks like as we get that latest velocity scan sometimes in these uh in these other products that we have they lag a little bit behind the main reflectivity product so the deal with this is is that we're going to wait to see where that where that damage was we're going to go back uh over the last few minutes and we will break that down for you just uh in just a second. First, I want to, I'm just working on another stream to get going here, so bear with me. First and foremost, uh, again, welcome to the stream if you're just tuning, uh, uh, tuning in on YouTube. Welcome, guys. Um, unfortunately, we're talking about some nasty weather, and where you see that blinking purple box, that means that it's not only a tornado warning, but now a confirmed tornado warning. The relatively good news, and I use good news lightly because there was damage um, caused. We saw that on radar, uh, but this storm is moving offshore very, very quickly. It's about to exit into the Atlantic. Now, we do have another round of strong storms coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to dissect that in just a little bit of time. Um, but nonetheless, we are going to be watching that closely. So post in the comments where you're tuning in from. Just going to work on getting this other stream updated here. But there is uh, there is the really, really nasty stuff. Let me try to turn on. And that's exactly where the worst of this weather is. So South Ponta Verde, uh, Vedra Beach, that's where we have the worst of the weather. Let me turn on the velocity as this thing has kind of lifted from about this area to here. And again, we just have a few more minutes of the storm itself that has caused damage um, and... Uh, is now moving back out to sea.
Alrighty, guys, meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're still on YouTube on ClickOrlando.com, New 6 Plus. We had been following a tornado in progress in St. John's County. Uh, damage likely has occurred. We saw the tornado debris signature moving through St. John's County. We can go back and look at that um, in just one second. Uh, I don't want to say good news, but that threat is now over. You still see that purple blinking box uh, that includes St. Augustine. The worst part of that storm now has exited the coast. So wait for that update there, but that was going to be right in that hook right there. So that is now back out into the Atlantic. Uh, still, though, that tornado warning continues, but the rotation associated with that storm is now off the coast. Let me uh, draw. Let me bring out my red marker. The coastline is right here, and uh, it has now exited the coastline. So that is uh, the good news there. Some people are talking about being from southern Ohio. You guys have a severe weather threat today on the eastern side. Uh, for Indiana Beach, Florida, welcome, Crystal. Uh, also friends in Tampa and St. Augustine. Some nasty storms on both coasts right now. And now again, the good news, I use that lightly, but there's the rotation that has now pushed out to sea. So the threat in St. John's County is over, all though it has uh, already caused uh, some damage oh, with that, just getting another little buzz. Let me just look down here. Um, okay. Just an update with some warnings we have. If you are just joining us, um, whether you're on the Just Weather page or on the Click Orlando News 6 page or on ClickOrlando.com. We have some nasty storms. Uh, no doubt the worst of it was in St. John's County. We had a confirmed tornado uh, move through the county just to the northwest of St. Augustine. So we're going to be checking up on that to see uh, what the damage was. Unfortunately, it did go through uh, several neighborhoods and we were able to confirm the damage on radar Nonetheless, we still have some nasty, albeit straight line potential damage here coming through southern Marion County. This is going to be heading toward uh, the Ocala National Forest. This is that fresh severe thunderstorm warning we were talking about just moments ago. This is going to roll until 1215. So for another 10 minutes, we will see if that gets extended into parts of Volusia and Flagler County. So if you're watching in those counties, again, heads up, we have a nasty storm. You're likely seeing uh, the darker clouds coming in from the west. Uh, you, may, you might be to hear the thunder at this time as well let's get you back to the tampa radar this is where and they have just issued a very very big uh, severe thunderstorm warning that contains really for areas from just south of the villages and i think that just came out right now i'm just getting uh, some buzzing on the phone but there you go this is going to go until 12 30 this does include sumter again so we're back in it in sumter county again post in the comments where you're tuning in from uh, across either Florida, I know there's a severe weather threat, obviously, in uh, parts of the Ohio River Valley as well. Um, we'll try to jump up there and take a look at that uh, as time allows. Uh, right now, focusing on central Florida, where we are based out of, um, with the nasty severe weather threat again. Uh, hey, Bob and Fort McCoy, good to see you. Right now, most of those storms are just to your south in Fort McCoy. Uh, Reddick, we're getting some of the rain. McAnope, McIntosh, and then at least, at least the heaviest stuff anyway is uh, closer to downtown Ocala into Bellevue and then really over the Ocala National Forest right now. That's where we have the... Um, the worst of the weather at this time uh, pushing through. Uh, this is all kind of sliding to the east with a short jog into the northeast as well. So again, all this stuff is going to be moving up toward uh, Lake Catherine into Pearson. Um, Flagler Beach, Palm Coast, we're back in it. And then this is going to be an early heads up in Zephyr Hills, Dade City. Thank you guys for all of the reports as well. Uh, if you can include your location, as some people saying that it's very windy uh, out there. And yeah, that's the other component with this um, that we do that. We are used to this in um, Florida for sure. Maybe not so used to the getting your home destroyed by a tornado, which may have happened in St. John's County. So please be respectful of that. We did have a confirmed tornado uh, 
go through St. John's County. So I know we're used to this, but we're, we're giving that heads up um, because we just had a damaging tornado confirmed um, in St. John's County. Hey, Stephanie, uh, in Davenport, by the time the storms get to my area, will they still be capable of producing a tornado? We are in a tornado watch in Polk County until 3 o'clock. So the answer to that is yes, albeit, um, albeit, the threat should be getting a little bit lower and lower, but we'll see if they if they do that again. We have um, we have uh, the opportunity as we watch this whole line of storms really extending back into the Gulf of Mexico. If you were with us last week, uh, I can't remember if it was last Wednesday or Thursday. Everything's running together, um, but we had those nasty storms go through, and we were talking about that they were kind of fizzling out as they got on land. That isn't the case today. They're actually beefing up even further. The lightning strikes are getting more prolific. Uh, certainly, it's really loud around Tampa with the thunder, uh, St. Pete into Largo, Palm Harbor, Clearwater, uh, through Holiday as well. Let's put a timer on some of these. So into Elfers and a Newport Ritchie in about 10 to 15 minutes, these are going to be up. Uh, Jamie Est uh, Jasmine Estates, excuse me, about 15 minutes, and then Bayonet Point also in about 15 minutes as well. So again, that's going to be a heads up, and that's to the worst part of the storm. Uh, Tony V and the Villages, what's going on? He's asking, is any anything coupling? Let's go check that at the moment. Um, so we'll check to see if anything coming in off the Gulf is rotating. Let me turn off the lightning for a short amount of time. Uh, we do have a little bit of that going on. It's very, very broad. Uh, this is around uh, just to the west of Newport Ritchie. It's right in through here. I wouldn't really call it a couple, a couplet, like what we saw in St. John's County just a little bit ago. Um, but uh, there's some broad rotation in there. So again, broad doesn't mean it's imminent going to produce a water spout in this case uh, since it's over the water or a tornado, but certainly something to watch. There's enough low-level spin today. Again, this isn't a huge tornado day, although we did have a tornado uh, touchdown in St. John's County. But there's enough as this line moves through to get one of these brief damaging tornadoes. So again, that's what we're going to be watching today. That's what we're going to be mindful of as we move through the rest of of this afternoon. So again, just uh, just be aware of that, and we're going to see if we continue to do that as well. Alina in uh, Elena in um, Daytona Beach, welcome to the stream. Appreciate you for tuning in. Um, hi in Melbourne, what is up? Hope you're doing well. Deltona near Lake Helen and in Silver Spring. Hey Joseph, good to see you again, my friend. Um, so in Silver Spring, we're under that warning right now. And we have some of the worst weather currently anyway. Let me get back to the Jacksonville radar as I kind of switch things around. And I don't know if you can confirm how windy it is out there. We are estimating uh, we're estimating winds uh, in southern Marion County at about 60 to 70 miles an hour. Now, the one thing is here, with the curvature of the earth, that radar beam from Jacksonville, we could use a radar right there. Um, that would really be helpful for storm tracking. Uh, but the radar is seeing very, very high into the sky right now. And as it's doing that, we're getting into those, uh, the really strong winds several thousand feet up. So I would not suspect that we are actually seeing 68 mile per hour wind gusts reach the ground. But nonetheless, there's a severe thunderstorm warning there and it's enough to be damaging. We could be talking more like 60 mile per hour wind gusts, uh, running through the Ocala National Forest right now. Hey, Sonia in Apopka, thanks for hopping on uh, the live stream on this Thursday now afternoon, just after 12. Palm Harbor, Jacob says that uh, that knob near Palm Harbor looks bad. So let's go back out here. And yeah, if you guys are seeing anything on the radar, hit me up, let me know what you're seeing as we're bouncing around to a bunch of different cells. And let's go check these out. And there you go. Okay, so this is what this is what we were just looking at about that broad rotation, and the National Weather Service just issued a tornado warning here. So this is going to include uh, Bayonet Point. This is again in uh, in right on the west coast here, the Gulf Coast of Florida, uh, for Pasco County. This is going to roll until 12:30, so about 20 minute warning here. Um, but the main storm is, or the main couplet is. 
still offshore at this time, but it's going to be rolling right on through. Let me put a timeline on this. Uh, you have about five minutes to get to your safe place in Port Ritchie. Jasmine Estates in about 10 minutes. Bayonet Point in less than 10 minutes. Again, you don't want to wait for that time. That's when the worst of the storm is going to roll up on you. So again, you want to make sure that you are getting into your safe place uh, as we speak right now. If you are in Pasco County, especially in the towns of uh, Bayonet Point, Jasmine Estates, Port Ritchie, Newport Ritchie as well, uh, because that is a certainly concerning radar signature. And now we have an active uh, tornado warning as well. Uh, Proud Patriot, Ocala, Florida, under tornado watch, winds 21 miles an hour to the south-southwest, gusting to 42. Thank you for that report. And our tornado watch goes until 3 o'clock. Kyle says in Claremont, uh, the wind is picking up. We'll take a look at that future radar in just a little bit. Um, we're going to be closer, I think, to that 3 to 5 o'clock ballpark as this kind of slides in from the west. So we still have a little bit of time to go, but out ahead of that, that's where we're going to be watching for those stronger winds uh, to roll on through. Just got off the road, Pittsburgh to Myrtle Beach. Hopefully a safe travel. Jessica says there's a water spout out there. Would not doubt it. I don't know if, if uh, you're seeing that, um, if that is ground truth. But what I will say is this couplet is tightening up. About 10 minutes ago, we talked about we were watching this closely. And now you see this little cylinder pop up. Do you see that cylinder? That is the computer on our radar system also picking up that there is some strong rotation in there. And that's kind of that heads up for us. We were already dissecting it. But again, when that cylinder pops up, that is the radar. So again, this is a really, really concerning signature now. We talked about the rotation formally being broad. It is not any longer. It is tight and it continues to tighten up. So again, um, if you are watching from Bayonet Point, Jasmine Estates, right off the 595 on a San Miguel Drive onto Little Road on a Massachusetts Avenue, uh, Green Key Road, again, the circulation here is almost on shore. Uh, Virginia, this is uh, in Pasco County, Florida. So this is the Gulf Coast of Florida in Pasco County, north of Tampa, um, well to the north uh, of Tampa, uh, but this is just ready to come on shore. I'm just zooming out to make sure we don't have any couplets already on land. Um, let me go back through. And again, um, this is your early heads up. This is going to be on. Uh, this is going to be on shore very soon. Again, these update every few minutes, so we may actually already have uh, that couplet on the shore. So I'm going to get out ahead of it now. And if you happen to be tuning in, we have a few people from Pasco County and from that area. Uh, so. Into Fox Hollow Drive, Ranch Road, Little Road, Hilltop Drive, uh, San Miguel Drive, Ridge Road. This is where the worst of the storm is going to track. So, again, I want you to get into your safe place right now. Again, not a ton of basements in Florida. We all know that if you're from here, interior most room. Uh, if you have a bike helmet nearby, I know that sounds crazy, but... Most of the injuries and fatalities from a tornado are from flying objects hitting the head. So again, um, that is super, super important. A bathroom or a closet, that's a great place uh, to go. Again, we've already seen a tornado do damage in St. John's County today. Uh, and we have another concerning radar signature popping up on the Gulf Coast of Florida. Um, so Bayonet Point, again, this is uh, ready to roll right on through us in the next few minutes. Uh, Pinto Drive, Hudson Avenue, Hicks Road, Little Road. Um, this is in Pasco County, Florida, if you're just tuning in. Uh, early heads up onto Hayes Road, onto Suncoast Parkway South. That's the 589. If you have anybody, uh, any family or friends live there or you live there yourself, that's where we have uh, an active tornado warning. So, again, this is going to be up in just a few minutes. We're waiting for a new fresh radar signature to come in to see what the uh, to see what the look of this storm is and that we should be getting another one relatively soon uh, but regardless very very concerning
All right, so if you are just tuning in uh, on YouTube or on ClickOrlando.com and on the uh, New 6 app, Pinpoint Weather app, we are following kind of an ugly situation here. We've already had a confirmed tornado today in St. John's County, north of St. Augustine. We have another very concerning couplet. Uh, when I say couplet, some tight rotation. Uh, you see that cylinder. That is where the radar is picking up on the rotation. Here it is. Uh, closer to the surface, and this is moving toward Jasmine Estates, likely sliding north of Port Ritchie, um, closing in on the 595. It's likely already there because the radar updates every few minutes, but it's heading in that direction, again, toward Bayonet Point, um, Little Road, Osceola Drive into Hicks Road. Let me... Sea Lock Tower Parkway or Clock Tower Parkway. They had a giant space there, so that is Clock Tower Parkway. Little Road, Fred Street, Clyde Street, Pinto Drive, Carl Street. So if any of these um if any of these storms ring a bell or if any of these street names ring a bell, um please uh make sure you, you are taking action on that. Okay, just getting more updates here. Uh, new severe thunderstorm warning issued for Marion County and Flagler County until 1245. We're going to get back up there to check that out. Um, let's take a look at some of these other storms coming on shore. All right, still waiting on the latest radar update, making sure no other warnings have come out. Let's take a look around the Clearwater area. Looks like we just received an update that looked like fresh data coming in. So let's get back up to where we have our tornado warning. Okay, so here we go. So it looks like the, at least for the short term, that couplet, and I, when I refer to this as a, as a couplet, it's the reds and the greens together. They're not touching right now, so we still have a little bit of broad rotation in there. So it may have loosened up as it came on shore, but these have a history of doing that and then tightening back up. Um, that's why uh, they tighten back up again. So just keep that in mind. Bayonet Point, the worst of that storm, is now moving overhead. Look at all that purple there. Let's just make sure that we don't have any, uh, nothing coming up on the damage signature. But again, we always talk about that's one of the secondary radar products that you need to have the reflectivity, which is what we're, what we're looking at before. This is your traditional radar um, and everything. So that's what we're kind of watching at this time anyway. Let me check let me just zoom this back out we had a new severe thunderstorm warning uh and we also have a new tornado warning i think somebody mentioned this in the chat but this is now going to include clear water um so let's get into here the worst part of this storm so now we have uh tornado warnings that include uh pinellas county florida and pasco county florida this is going to roll until 12:45. so this includes uh, Oldsmar, Clearwater. This is just, this is, does not include, uh, it does not include Tampa itself. It's just to the west of Tampa. Um, so we have some more rotation just off of Indian Rocks Beach. So we may have a water spout trying to develop. That is still offshore. So that is another tornado warning. So we have two active tornado warnings if you're just watching us on the Gulf Coast of Florida. Again, we're out of central Florida watching this severe weather threat roll through from west to east. So if you're tuning in from the Orlando area or Apopka, Ocala, we have some nasty storms uh, in and around Flagler County um, right now. We can take a look at that. I want to take a look at that because I don't want to leave you guys hanging. Right now, there's nothing in our county, in Flagler County, but um, they have gone ahead and warned way in advance of this storm just because, uh, just because uh, 
the storms have been in, have been intense today, so they're giving us super extra heads up. So this does include Bunnell, just barely. This also includes Pomona Park in Crescent City. This is going to be also for Putnam County, Florida, um, and including Flagler County. It does not include Volusia, and then that was the reissuance as well for Marion. Okay, so we're going to get back down to where we have the two tornado warnings right now. Let me get that off the screen let me get back to the tampa radar that's our closest radar site and still the area of most concern at this point is going to be bayonet point uh pinto drive uh entered around bayonet point just to the west of 589 that includes the 589 so if you do have to uh if you do have um if you do have to drive on the 589 through pasco county you might want to delay that travel Let's take a look at the latest here with our Clearwater one. It certainly looks like the rotation at this point has washed out. Not seeing any thing popping up on correlation coefficient so that's thanks Florida dash cam appreciate that report uh, Sarasota County and uh, just south thank you for that uh, shooters only games if you're still with us uh, the storm that storm threat has passed for you. There was a tornado on the ground just north of you in St. Augustine uh, through St. John's County, but that has since moved out into the open waters of the Atlantic. So that threat is over for you. Uh, right now, I mean, those storms could come back in your direction a little bit later on. Now most of this junk, though, is kind of pushing off that way and moving this way. So you should be done uh, with your severe weather threat in St. Augustine. Hey, Carbon Fiber, good to see you as well uh, from Lake County. Yeah, we've had Gus already uh, pushing 40 miles an hour in Lake County. Um, Lizzie, back to you. I am so glad that they missed that tornado. Very, very happy that they missed that. And that was a really, really uh, scary time to watch that go through. So I'm hoping that everybody was able to take cover of where that was going through. You got it, B. Thank you for being on the live stream. Be safe in Pasco County. As we are still watching that tornado warning for another five minutes, we'll see if the National Weather Service does continue that. It's not looking as impressive. It, it's There's still rotation in this storm. Uh, we can see that by, again, the green going toward the radar. The red going away, that's the, how we calculate the wind or measure the wind or see the wind. And there's the couplet. It's not, they're not touching each other. We don't have that tornado vortex signature. But um, nonetheless, there's enough rotation there that if this were to tighten up, it could produce a, a tornado. And, and that is why we have the tornado warning there. Now, this one in clear water, it's certainly not as... It's certainly not as bad. Some of that there rolling through. Indian Rocks Beach. Let me just see if... It appears like mo the, most of the rotation is is back on most of the rotation is going to be sliding outside of this warning it's right here 
So right now, if you're watching in uh, Walsingham and Ulmerton and High Point, again, the worst of this storm looks like it's sliding. It's like straddling the warning down here. So you may technically not even be in the warning, um, but we are going to be dealing with uh, really nasty storms and all that stuff. So, hey, Dave in Winnipeg, thanks for joining the stream. All right, we want to welcome back the viewers that were just watching News 6 at noon. If you're tuning in on News 6 Plus, we are uh, continuing severe weather coverage here. We have a few severe thunderstorm warnings for the central Florida area. Uh, what we have been tracking for the last hour have been a few tornado warnings both north and west of the immediate central Florida area. Uh, we'll take you up closer to Bunnell for us in Flagler County. Uh, this is also going to include Putnam County. Uh, right now, there's not a ton going on in Flagler. We have the warning anyway, but uh, the worst of the weather is still kind of yet to come. Let me switch back to the Jacksonville radar real quick, and then we'll get back to the severe thunderstorm war or the tornado warnings on the Gulf Coast. But there's Crescent City. We're up in 23 minutes. Pomona Park in about 24. And then Benel, we're going to be closer to about 30 minutes. That warning continues until 1245. That will likely have to be extended. I'm just getting another alert here. Let me just check this out. Um, new severe thunderstorm warning for Volusia County and Lake County until 1245. Okay, so we have... Um, so we have a new warning for Lake County. It will populate on this map in a little bit, so we're going to be watching for that update. Where we have some of the worst of the weather is going to be... Um, hey, Falano, no warnings right now in Osceola County. Uh, we are outside of the tornado watch. We don't have any warnings right now. But what we're going to do is, you see those two flashing red boxes, so we're going to get back and check in on Pasco County. Uh, okay, there is a latest radar scan. I don't want to say good news. We're still in the tornado warning. We'll see if they extend that tornado warning into parts of Polk County. I don't know that they will. Um, Lillian watching from the Four Corners Kissimmee area. Weather Florida man says about a 12-inch tree branch flew into your window. I hope everything is okay with that. Uh, good to see you again, by the way. Hey, Wendy, good to see you again. Uh, Lake County severe storm. Just got wind in Sebring, Cheyenne. Thank you for that report. Hello, my friend in the Dominican Republic. Good to see you. I hope we don't have to talk about you guys too much this hurricane season. All right, so what we have going on here, let me get the dabber out, this little icon there so we have winds going away from the radar at about 50 to 55 miles an hour um sliding through again the rotation is relatively broad here we go with a new all right so a new severe thunderstorm morning for polk in sumter county that's going to update on the map and i think there it is right there is that just a continuation of no that is the one that is expiring right now so we'll see the map is going to update in just one second um Yes, D. Graham, it, we, we, they, they did. We watched that on radar do some damage. Uh, we saw the damage signature pop up, unfortunately. Uh, and that was in St. Johns County where a confirmed tornado w rolled through earlier. Okay, lots of thunder being reported in Lake County. Let me get the actual radar back on. Here's... Here's the deal, and this is, again, what we don't want, and this is, this is why there is the tornado watch issued, that we have these discrete cells. And you never like when they get discrete when there's a little bit of spin in the atmosphere because that's whenever they have the opportunity to spin just a little bit.
Okay, timeline for sales reaching the 407. You mean? Do you mean the Orlando area, um, or the road? Hey, Tammy, a shout out in Wayne County, New York. Thank you for hopping on the live stream on the Just Weather page. Holding on to our hats in Brevard. It is really windy out there for sure. Let's check into this warning. Uh, let's see. Let's see if they continue it. I would imagine. Okay, so that rotation here closer to Largo and now south of Clearwater is kind of jumped back into the warned area. It was straddling the line down here, but it's kind of moved back up. Okay, Snippy says uh, getting bad in the Brandon Riverview side. Hey, Maria, good to see you. You're welcome. All right, so let me zoom this back out now. Um, and if you're just joining us on ClickOrlando.com and on New 6 Plus, welcome. Um, if you are joining us on YouTube or the Pinpoint Weather app, also welcome. Thank you guys for being here. Unfortunately, we're talking about some nasty weather. Okay, the good news is they have allowed that tornado warning in Pasco County to expire. So, um, I'm right over the bridge in Clearwater, not bad at all. Yeah, the worst of it's going to be south of Clearwater, for sure. All right, so the one point I want to make with this, we still have broad rotation. You see the green and the red. They, it, it has backed out enough, or it, it has loosened enough and become a little more broad that they were able to expire the warning. There's still a severe thunderstorm warning uh, for Pasco County and for parts of Polk County. This is what had been extended, and this rolls until 1:15. This includes Lake County. I'm not sure where you guys on, on the Click Orlando page uh, in Lake County where exactly you are, carbon fiber in Wendy. Uh, okay, so Mount Dora used this area, so I don't believe we are included in that warning just yet, but those storms will be uh, knocking on the doorstep likely a little as we close in on that 2 o'clock to 2.30. Um, that 2.30... Uh, time frame and the use this to varies Mount Dora, Umatilla uh, area in Lake County. Um, so let me zoom back out. Also want to watch around Spring Hill. There's a little bit of rotation around Spring Hill. It's very weak, but there's a little bit there. Again, that's going to be one thing that we'll watch. There's another little area. Let me. There you go. And that's an ice. So we got to watch this guy right here. Um, so that's going to be an early heads up in Coleman into Bushnell, Lake Panasofsky in Sumter County. Um, so just keep that in mind. Jim A in Port Orange, uh, not yet. We are under a tornado watch, though, until 3 o'clock in Port Orange. But we want to watch this guy right here. That's going to be a developing supercell thunderstorm. And let's go just check in on our tornado warning down here for... Pinellas. This rolls for another nine minutes. We'll try to get into the future radar in just one second. But again, this is one of the things we're concerned with today, these little segments and supercell. So there's one of them around Oldsmar. And there's another one right there, those kidney bean-shaped guys. Those are what we look at um, or look for for the best potential to spin. Again, the environment is not its not 100% here for a big tornado day, although we've now had three warnings and we've had a, a tornado touchdown, a confirmed tornado, um, in all in in all this mess that moved through about an hour or so ago uh, carbon fiber says winds are increasing in the Eustis area 
um, asking about Orlando. Hey, Kit Kat in uh, Groveland and Mascot. I believe we are in that uh, new severe thunderstorm morning. Let me get up to Groveland and Mascot and check on that for you. No, I'm wrong. It's just outside. So we're just outside of that warning in Groveland, Claremont, Mascot, Mineola. Love, love Southern Lake County. It's the best if you've never been there. It's awesome through uh, coming out of Orange County in Winter Garden, Oakland, Mineola. Mm, it's so nice. A lot of good trails over there, too. When it's not storming, take advantage of those. All right, so some very windy uh, conditions, I think, in Orlando. 40 mile per hour wind gust. Yeah, we had reports close to that at the airport. Yeah, Tim Tim Curran says I believe we aren't looking at very long track tornadoes. That is the uh that and that's the thing and that's what we were uh kind of just getting into a little bit of that there's enough for these brief tornadoes, still damaging, of course. Again, we had one on the ground in St. John's County, but um, the good news is the, it's not the environment for them to last too terribly long. Still, though, if it touches down where you are and hits something, um, you know, that's obviously not a good thing. Uh, as soon as we clear this tornado warning, I'm going to take a look at the future radar with you guys and all that stuff. So that's... that's uh, that is what that's what I want to show you to kind of give you the timeline here, but I w just want to make sure I just want to make sure that uh, we get the most life threatening stuff out of the way. I don't want to leave that alone just yet. Sorry, just hit the mic. Okay, so the Wesley Chapel area, someone asked about Wesley Chapel and San Antonio, so we're going to kill two birds with one stone right here. Let me lapse this data, Let me, which I'm going to put it on a little bit of a loop. So this is all rolling kind of west to east, so this is a heads up in Dade City. Uh, it's a heads up in St. Leo and San Antonio, Florida, uh, Darby into Pasco, and then also into... Hey, thanks, Proud Patriot. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you, Carbon Fiber. Thanks for that. Um, thanks for your help as well. Hey, Florida Dash Cam, uh, good to see you again. Um, uh, so far, I've not had any hail reports. Let me see if I can turn on, I'll turn on my little eyeball icon there and see if we have anything pop up. Let me stop... Set some wind damage, wind gusts of 46 miles an hour in St. Augustine. Um, I do not see any hail reports, and it's not a huge hail day today. We weren't able to really, like, generate a ton of instability today. And look at that. I mean, Leesburg, 43 mile per hour gust from the airport there out ahead of the storms. So that's that's wild. And again, we we knew that was was coming as well. All right. So let me I'm going to minimize this radar real quick. And what I'm going to do. Okay, so we uh, just had a, tor a tornado warning issued in Volusia County. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run off of here real quick to go help our meteorologist Candace Campos for the on-air section. So we're going to be focused now solely on um, solely on the Volusia County area with this uh, tornado warning. This is going to be a black screen for a little bit of time. But then you're going to see our coverage come back into play, and you're going to see uh, the coverage. So as soon as she gets on air, I will get this 
Um, I will get this back over. Let me just get to the computer while we're while we're doing that. But uh, if you're just joining us, tornado warning now for Volusia County. Let me get all that information. Stand by. Still yet to pop up on here. Let me look at the data. Okay, so this is going to go until 1 o'clock. Again, just issued tornado warning uh, for Volusia County. Melbourne, radar, velocity, and... This is one of the cells you're watching. There is the bright color right around uh, the Pearson area. So this is going to be north of Pearson. This is about to cross Highway 17. Let me see if I can, and all that green there, that is the shear marker there. So again, if you're just joining us, watching us on News 6 Plus, click Orlando.com, uh, the Pinpoint Weather app. Um, we now have a tornado warning for both uh, Volusia County and Flagler County because of this cell here. It's right on the northwest side of Volusia. The county goes just like that. And then here is Flagler County. So with that, moving towards uh, really closer to Bunnell, as soon as the map updates, you're going to be able to see the... Um, you're going to be able to see the markings there. So while uh, you'll see that, that change... And then there you go. So there is the blinking the blinking box that includes Bunnell, that includes Pearson, uh, that it's just north of Pearson, I should say, just south of Crescent City, and then rolling about Highway 17 and northern and the little nub of Volusia County for us uh, around Astor, Pearson, uh, north of Pearson, and all of that. All righty, guys, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go help our meteorologist Candace Campos. We're going to join in on some team coverage on News 6. If you're in the greater central Florida area, tune in to News 6. We're going to have live coverage there. If you're watching on News 6 Plus, keep it right here. If you're watching on YouTube or the Pinpoint Weather app, also keep it right here because I'm going to send the stream right there. The screen might be black for a little bit of time. Uh, that is because the control room is getting ready to Mr. hop County on the television. And there is Candace. We're going to so send it over to her. We're going to hop in on the coverage. Thanks, guys. Is here in Flagler County. This is in effect until 1:15. As this line is quickly going to be approaching areas of Bunnell. So if you're watching us in and around the Bunnell area, this is the time for you to take cover. If you know of any family or friends in and around that area, same story there. In uh, Volusia County, this is kind of the northern end, just north of Pearson. That is under an advisory, of, I should say a warning, a tornado warning in effect until 1 o'clock. Uh, so just a couple of minutes, about a 15-minute uh, warning here for areas in and around Flagler and Volusia County. So let's zoom in here, give you an idea of what's going on. You can see we've been tracking tornado warnings, uh, tornado, uh, or at least rotating storms within the last couple of hours across areas uh, up and down the Gulf Coast. We've also had a confirmed touchdown tornado in areas of uh, around in and around St. Augustine. So this system that we've been talking about all morning long has certainly had the potential of spinning up a, a, a brief tornado, but we are tracking this one. This is what we're kind of watching right now. This is out of the Jacksonville radar. And what we're looking at right now is for basically green and red to be close together. That really kind of start, starts giving us a better idea and a depiction of kind of a rotating storm. And this is the reason why we are breaking in because we are starting to see some of that happening here. So we're seeing a 28 mile per hour wind here on the red side and then on the green side at about a 39 mile per hour speed there. So when that is all said and done, we're talking about the potential of some rotation right here. So where are we even talking about here? So let's try to zoom in, give you an idea, a little more towards kind of that street level for you. Again, this tornado warning is in effect for another 15 minutes with the other advisory in effect for another 30. So Hammond areas of Bakerstown, Seville as well down through Corners, uh, looks like Cornersville there. So these are the areas that the kind of the zone that we are watching for kind of right here, this zone, as it continues to track quickly towards the north and east. So let's show you some of the arrival times when it comes to this cell. This is going to be approaching you pretty quickly. As you can see, the arrival times are less than about five minutes here. So areas in and around Crescent City, this is your time to make sure that you are getting into the most interior portion of your, of your home, away from windows, especially just getting indoors. 
Uh, you can see areas of St. John's Park in about seven minutes, Eric Crescent City Station there in about three minutes. So of course, we are going to continue to watch this as it continues to make its way towards the east uh, pretty quickly at this hour. So let me zoom out here because we're not watching again one but two different uh, warnings right now. So the other one here in the Benel area, uh, the National Weather Service in our little chat that we have here uh, with a lot of the broadcast meteorologists is basically telling anyone in and around the Benel area that was even before the warning fired up, they sent out that alert which was a pretty good precursor to that tornado warning. So here is Bunnell, and of course, just a few miles to the west is where we are seeing some of the heaviest rain. And you can see with the last radar sweep that it's moving into Bunnell pretty quickly at this hour. So let's zoom in again in and around Bunnell. Then we're still talking areas along US 1, um, Bimini, Black Point. These are the areas that are kind of the most uh, concerning right now, areas of Espan Espanola. A little further south, trying to give you a kind of some other kind of locators here. DuPont areas into New Run. You're just on that southern fringe of some of the worst of the weather. And there's St. John's Park that we were talking about. So again, these arrival times are um, coming at you pretty quickly when it comes to this this one cell. And we are now starting to pop up this icon. The cylinder icon is exactly where we were looking at what we call a cup coupling. You'll hear uh, meteorologists kind of calling that because it's basically a the best way to remember is kind of a couple between a green and a red. And the closer they are and the brighter those colors are, the stronger the storm is. And that's exactly where we're looking at right now. So if you know anyone in and around the Bakerstown area, if you're watching us in this area, north, south, and especially towards the east, this is the time for you to certainly take cover um, because when we're tracking some of these cells, we've had confirmed ones already. So that's the, something that we, of course, take very seriously here. So again, 29 mile per hour winds. Um, the green and the red basically show the different directions to and fr towards and away from the radar sweep. So you can see that we are seeing pretty strong winds, uh, kind of that rotating that we of course don't wanna see, but hence that tornado warning again is in effect. A little further to the south, areas right along 17, heading into the Pearson area. We are also dealing with some of that rotation. So it's, um, I would say it's broad, but it certainly has tightened since the last, since the beginning of this advisory warned area. So just wanted to let you know on that. All right, this is US 17. And again, we have kind of dueling tornado warnings here and the alarm, Jonathan Kegis is, is here checking out the other advisories. Cause we also have uh, severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for a big portion of our Western counties here in areas of Sumter, just approaching Lake County right now. Uh, we've been tracking some of these that have been really packing a punch and starting to spin up right as they make their way on shore. They're an area of Spring Hill, pu pushing into Bunnell, the villages just about to see uh, some, of the, some of the heavier rain there affecting areas of Wildwood. So let's widen out the view. So areas, I know if you're watching us from I-4 South, you're going, what storm are you even talking about? But this is the reason why. It's it's two tornado warnings. That's the reason why we are jumping in here. Unfortunately, interrupting your your show. But again, it's Crescent City south into the Pearson area is where we are seeing again uh, that icon, that cylinder icon showing you that the modeling as well as a lot of our radar data is picking up that potential for a rotating storm in areas of. There it is. Yeah. So once again, let me show you here. This is the Volusia County line here. This is at one o'clock Pearson along 17. I'm just trying to show you as many uh, kind of towns and areas in and around this area. So Shirley Place, Hammond, Denver. This is Crescent City Station, Crescent City as well. You can see areas of Huntington. So I know I'm getting in really into the weeds here on this radar, but I just were trying to give you as much notice. So again, if you are in and around Central Florida and you're nowhere near here, but you know family or friends who even work, live, or whatnot, this is, again, this is gonna be the biggest concern for us here um, as this hour at least. So again, we have two different tornado warnings. We have one there in Volusia County and the other one pushing pretty quickly into Bunnell. So let's pick up. There's a skip marker here, Jonathan. Are you getting any other information? 
anything? Uh, well, just one of the things that I uh, <laughs> want to kind of point out, Candace was talking about on the noon show about that tornado warning for St. John's County where there was a confirmed tornado. The, mm -hmm. the, these storms are moving into the same environment that what they saw in, in uh, St. John's County. Again, we're not that far away from it. So again, these are going to have a tendency to strengthen as they move further to the east. And we are seeing this couplet as Candace continues to call it as well. The reds and the greens next to each other get tighter and get brighter. So the rotation is strengthening here. So again, this is a big time heads up for Bunnell. You really need to be in your safe place right now and really anywhere in between from about Crescent City to Bunnell, even again, just Watch this very closely in Beverly Beach and Flagler Beach. Again, there's nothing that uh, imminent that we're saying that this is on the ground at this time, but this is a very, very concerning radar signature from, a, from again from a radar perspective where we're seeing the winds uh, go away and toward the radar. We certainly have some rotation sliding through. So one of the things, again, that we are going to continue to watch as we move uh, away from Highway 17, this is moving out of Volusia County into uh, central uh, Flagler County. But now we are very concerned about you again. That tornado warning goes for you uh, until 115 and it may even need to be extended. So what we want to do now, if we can zoom in on links to for me, Candace, I want to try to get some streets here. I don't have control of, of the radar, but if you want, we want to get a little bit out ahead of uh, this system, it's going to be on the, the traffic camera mouse. Um, I have that loaded up. I have KVM over on the traffic computer. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to zoom in, give me one one second here. Um, and right over here, um, we'll just take that close in because this is a really, really concerning signature coming okay. up. It continues to get brighter. Um, so again, heads up and new run. If you're uh, State Road 11, want to make sure that you are getting into your safe place. County Road 110, County Road 108. Uh, this is going to be rolling right on through about St. John's Park. Again, this is uh, very concerning. Right. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, I mean, one of the more impressive radar signatures we have seen in quite some time across Central Florida. Mm -hmm. um, the, the very, very bright, Candace. And Jonathan, you know, we've been talking about these brief, weak tornadoes that we get here a lot of the time when we come to these, uh, these spring fronts, especially when we start factoring a lot more of that heat and humidity building up ahead of that front. Um, but just as you can see there, that signature is a lot of the times these tornadoes kind of spin up real quick and disappear pretty fast. So radar sweeps go around and you really, really don't catch much of what we call that couplet, that red and that green really tightly spun up together. And unfortunately, that is what exactly what we're seeing right now. It is that red and that green. So let me just show you some of the arrival times. So we're talking Espanola, Bunnell. Those are the main zones of concern at this hour. So as we zoom and give you kind of an idea of the arrival times there. DuPont in about 18 minutes. So areas in and around Bunnell, that's kind of like more of the, the bigger location that we try to zone, hone in on just a little bit there. Bunnell in about 16 minutes. Espanola in about 15, Bimini in about 11. So you can see it's right basically on top of Shirley Place at this hour. And then Palm Coast, if it continues to hold and spin up, it will um, continue to make its way into Palm Coast in the next about 24 minutes. So I know there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here, so I'm really trying to clean this up for you to get a better idea. So the blinking reds, once again, if you're just joining us, it is 12.55 in the afternoon on Thursday, a weather alert day for this reason exactly. We are looking at some of our Department of Transportation uh, cameras there. This is I-95 and Flagler. Uh, you can see it just really coming down in buckets. The cloud cover is completely sucked in there. And, um, of course, when we start talking about the potential of these rotating of these storms to rotate. You're also adding in a whole lot of rain happening at the same time, which is also concerning because that's when we start having that concern of what we call rain wrap tornadoes is that the tornadoes there. You just can't see it because of the rain that's pretty much blanketing it. So that is uh, one of the concerns that we, are, of course, are factoring in to this. So when we start talking about those brighter signatures. This is exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about that. I, I have a feeling, Jonathan, this is what this cylinder here is a little bit on the delayed side. It has shifted already much further towards the east already. So you can see the National Weather Service kind of holding on to that tornado warning again until one o'clock. So we still got four more minutes under that uh, warning. But then to the east, we still have it for another 15 minutes. So they're pretty much preempting this system, this little cell here, speeding through areas of um, 
Volusia County and into Flagler County as well. So let's zoom in. Once again, we're talking about the arrival time of the torrential downpour and that potential for a rotating storm. I feel like it's kind of opening up a little bit, Jonathan. And it's just a, a, a report coming through. This is out of Putnam County, but this is okay. where the cell kind of went through. Emergency management reporting a tree on a car All right. uh, on Highway 17. You were talking about 17 a little bit ago as well. Mm -hmm. So at the very least, this storm does have a history of producing some damage in the mix. So again, just an extra reason to take take precaution. And look how much lightning is embedded within this one cell, which is just just kind of shows you the intensity of it. Not only does it packing a lot of lightning and a whole lot of rain, but it's also having that potential for that spin up. Now, mind you, this morning, as of five in the morning, we were talking about winds gusting upwards about 30 to 35 miles per hour. That was miles ahead of the front. So now when you start bringing in some of these cells that have the potential of themselves producing winds like that, you're just adding to the mix. And so the potential of picking up a, uh, a wind gust upwards about 60 to 70 miles per hour is not out of the picture, which of course could cause damage as Jonathan was talking about there. Um, areas of Flagler Beach in about 27 minutes. This is just a couple of our little icons here. These little arrows are picked up and put up on our radar as a kind of a pre, kind of shows us some of the stronger cells. The red ones tend to be the ones that are really the most significant ones. So let's pop it up here. And I'm looking at the hail size. We're looking at about less than an inch here of, um, of hail size, about a 50% shot there of seeing some of that hail embedded within some of these big time updrafts. So Beverly Beach in about six minutes, Palm Coast in about five. So basically, if you're watching us anywhere in and around uh, Flagler County, other than there through Flagler Beach, north of Ormond Beach. This will be kind of the zone we're gonna to continue to really keep an eye on. So again, we have two more minutes where we are watching that first uh, tornado warning that was issued until one o'clock. But I think since then, it's still rocking where you're at, but I, ha I have a feeling that that threat for the rotating storm is where we're gonna see that. Uh, right now, this is live video from I-95 and Palm Coast, my producer telling me. I mean, you can barely see some of the cars there, Jonathan. Yeah, and uh, right now where Candace was just watching, we're gonna take you out ahead of it. So you're not seeing all the action that Candace was just showing you because this is gonna be your heads up. I wanna show you some streets here. This is in the Bimini area. Again, County, uh, County Road 80 here for us in Flagler County. And then anywhere around West Highway 100. Again, this make sure you're in your safe place. This is sliding around the Bunnell area. And then just to the north, that's where the most dangerous part of this storm is starting to inch toward as well. And again, as we saw with the St. Johns County tornado, tornado supercell as this uh, slid on through that it, they do have a history of spinning up a little bit closer to the coast as well. So Lewisdale Place, this is going to be your time to make sure that you are in your safe place. Put as many walls as in between you and the outside as possible. West Highway 100 again, and then there is US 1 North State Street. So again, this is going to be just around the Bunnell area and then points to the north for us into Flagler County. Uh, Garden Lane also, that's going to be just out here, just outside of a uh, County Road 80, uh, West Highway 100 again into Bimini, uh, into Bimini. Again, we're not seeing all the crazy bright colors that we're showing you. I'm going to walk back over to uh, our weather computer. I'm going to show you. We're going to take a look at that updated scan. But again, this is where we are watching for uh, eventually this to slide through. And I'm going to pull this back out. Candace mentioned this a little bit ago, but what we're seeing on the radar is it broadening out a little bit. Now, again, that's a false sense of maybe we're going to see this thing spit down. And when I mentioned broadening, notice that there is a space now in between the reds and the greens. Before we had that couplet, as we call a tornado vortex signature. When they're very, very tight like that, the reds right up against the greens, that's when we have some low level rotation really starting to strengthen. So while it's certainly some better news that we're seeing it broaden out a little bit, a lot of times these can quickly spin back up and tighten back up as we call it. So again, this is heading right towards uh, US-1 in Bunnell. This is gonna be an early heads up for us into Beverly Beach, into Flagler Beach uh, as well. Notice even as we have the broadening of it, the latest radar scan, you saw the yellow cylinder pop back up. When that cylinder pops up on the map, that's an indication, again, that we do have rotation trying to strengthen and materialize. So that's why it's so important, again, to take these warnings extremely seriously, especially have that tornado, when you saw the green there with that latest scan come back in, brighten up. So it's an indication to us that it might try to 
tighten up again and try to produce a tornado, Candace. What are you seeing over there? I mean, we do have the winds to, you know, yeah. already ahead of it to be able to kind of kick it up uh, even further. Right now, we do want to give you kind of an update when it comes to the advice, the warnings that have are now currently in place. The one over Volusia County has now expired, but we are still watching the one over uh, Flagler County until 1:15. But they've added another warning. This one, though, is not a tornado warning, but a severe thunderstorm warning of winds capable of reaching excess of 60 to 65 miles per hour. So, of course, it's going to be the combination of the two, the severe thunderstorm warning in effect until 115 and the tornado warning also in effect until 115. So we're going to stay with you for another uh, 13 minutes or so as we continue to watch the progress of it. As of now, we have not had any confirmed reports of any touchdown tornado. This has all been Doppler indicated, radar indicated, meaning all the signatures that we're talking to you about are the same signatures that the National Weather Service are watching, uh, of course, to keep a very good <clears throat> close eye on the progress and the development and weakening of a lot of these cells. And hopefully we can get these weakened pretty fast. So let's kind of show you where the bullseye is of at least where the cylinder is showing, uh, just kind of to simplify things just a little bit, but areas here, Espanola in about five minutes, but now that just updated about five minutes. So this, this cell is really kicking up quick and it's pa pacing itself pretty quick towards the east. Um, again, DuPont in about six minutes. Areas a little further towards the coast, we're crossing over 95. Uh, it looks like areas like Palm Coast will be in about 13 minutes, about 12 minutes there in Beverly Beach, Flagler Beach as well. So that's kind of the timing, and uh, it's one of those things that we continue to watch. In St. Augustine, uh, at least that tornado that we were concerned about in St. Augustine, that was actually a confirmed because of the signatures. And let me kind of show you what we're talking about here. So let's kind of zone in on the area here where we're watching of uh, that potential of what we call, once again, the couplet. You can see the velocity here. And again, as Jonathan was just mentioning, the moment you start getting a little bit of, uh, of spacing between the reds and the greens, that starts, it shows it kind of like opening up just a little bit. And just like a figure skater, for instance, when they're spinning on the ice, the moment they open up their arms and they broaden and widen out, they start to slow things down. The moment you see these tighten up really fast, that's when we're concerned as we will start to see that spin and that vortex happen once again. But we look at this, it's called uh, the coefficient. You see there's a whole lot of pinks and yellows and things. What we're not seeing are those dark purples and blues. What this radar does is that it picks up just kind of the rain, the typical raindrops, maybe even a little bit of hail that certainly can be uh, being picked up here in these stronger cells. But what we're not seeing is what we call kind of that ground clutter, that debris ball that tends to happen when we actually have a confirmed tornado on the ground. In St. Augustine, just a few hours ago, we had that confirmed because where we're not seeing it, they were seeing those bright purples and oranges. So uh, that's certainly some good news. Uh, so we're seeing broadening. We're not seeing any debris fields with this. So hopefully we can continue to weaken this as it makes its way closer towards Bunnell. But once again, let me widen out the view in case you're just tuning in, wondering why you're not watching your show and you're watching us still. It's because of this. It's a tornado warning that is still in effect for Flagler County until 1:15. Of course, the polygon extends much further south than the main zone that we're watching, but I do still want to let you guys know if whoever is in that tornado warning, if you have your pinpoint weather app and you have your notifications enabled, you would have gotten this update a while back, all right? So areas of Cody's Corner, Deanville, Relay, they are all seeing uh, at least within that polygon, although it looks still like the bulk of the concern is to our north. All right, so you see here, we're starting to getting a little bit of the red and the green coming back together again. So let's show you kind of the arrival times of this one zone. Areas <clears throat> in Beverly Beach, oh, it's stuck on my finger here. Uh, Beverly Beach in about 12 minutes, but now it is just knocking on your doorstep there in about four minutes or so. So once again, this is what we're watching. We're watching the broadening of it, the weakening of it, but once again, we have so much instability as that cell continues to track over, still an atmosphere that's still very destabilized, um, very unstable, it has that potential of tightening up again. Jonathan?
Yeah, we're still watching that, of course, uh, sliding on through. want to get you out ahead of it. This is closer to uh, downtown Benel, just uh, north of downtown, where the worst of the, at least the rotating portion of this cell could be tracking through. I'll show you some of these uh, numbers in just one second. But again, North State Street, this is going to be US 1 here, Rimfire Drive, Rural Palms Parkway, uh, also getting into Beltaire Parkway, City Place, Old Kings Road, Colbert Lane, uh, South Riverland, uh, South Ocean Shore. Again, just keep that in mind. That's your early heads up. Now, this is hopefully going to get off of our coast very, very soon. We are close to the Atlantic Ocean where we have this current cell right now. But just off to the right, you see that yellow cylinder popping back up. Bunch of these numbers, the sheer coming in at about 80.6 miles an hour. So at the very least, there's enough to cause some wind damage of about 80 miles an hour worth of wind there. That's that gate to gate shear as we call it. And again, you tighten things up and that's what can eventually uh, get the tornado from, uh, get the funnel onto the ground. So we're gonna keep a close eye on that. That BTI value again, it's a number from one to nine. The higher the number, the higher the opportunity that this cell could produce a tornado. We have seen touchdowns though in Central Florida with that number getting to about 2.6 to 2.9. So we're watching that number closely and you see just as I say that it goes up to 3.5. So we're going to zoom out a little bit. Sorry for jumping off the screen. We'll jump back up to about uh, we'll zoom out a little bit in just one second to take a look at what that new radar scan shows. Um, so again, this is uh, the worst of this is just back off to my shoulder here. This is going to be on North uh, State Street. I know I just said you guys, but I, I really want you to take uh, the necessary precaution. East Moody Boulevard into Royal Palms Parkway, Rimfire Drive into City Place. Again, really watching that as well. That BTI number did jump up. So we're going to look at that latest radar scan coming on through just to make sure and just to kind of check this out ourselves. And you do see that brighter green again. So that's an indication to us that at the, at the very least, and there's that update. So the worst of this is right on top of Bunnell. So just in those uh, city streets that we were, we were just talking about, Candace, uh, we are close to getting this off, but we still have plenty of people in the way of the worst part of the storm. Honestly, uh, Jonathan, there's a lot of folks who are not within this one warrant area, but I don't know if you could hear the beeping while Jonathan was talking. We are uh, National Weather Service out of Melbourne is now saying they are going to extend the tornado watch where Seminole Brevard and Orange County were not under that watch, meaning that all the uh, potential, the all the factors to produce potential rotating storms has now been um, extended now. So if you're watching us from areas in Seminole County, Orange, Brevard, these areas here have now also been added to the tornado watch. Different than a warning. Watch meaning that all the factors, all the uh, tools and ingredients are there to produce spin-ups where a tornado warning meaning that there is either radar indicated or a confirmed tornado out over that area. So again, we have we have both right now. We have a tornado watch for pretty much all of Central Florida as well as this one zone in Flagler County until 115. So we still got another six more minutes here. But as Jonathan was just mentioning, it is getting close towards pushing offshore, but it still has a lot of neighborhoods and areas to go over before it's all said and done. Um, real quick, I just wanted to show areas outside of that warned area that you guys are still also getting probably tons of rain and lightning areas of Crescent City, Pearson. You're kind of on the tail end of the worst of the weather, but just to your west, you're also expecting a lot of rain as well. Ocala, Bellevue, you're just starting to kind of come out, it's maybe even seeing a few peaks of sunshine at this point in time, so you're pretty much done there and then we have another severe thunderstorm warning by the way for areas in and around uh, Sumter and uh, Lake County at this hour. This is in effect until 115. Actually, it just rides the border there between Lake and Sumter. So right now it's just for Sumter County areas there into the Bushnell area uh, Webster as well. But you can see we have a lot of these little pockets of um, there's a little torrential downpour is here, packed with some lightning at times. And then now we are starting to see some of that uh, rain and instability and the, the rain and storms starting to move in to areas of Ocoee, Altamont Springs. If you notice, we're switching between MLB and Jacksonville. It's because our viewing area is so large that it takes, it encompasses almost three different radar sites uh, to pick up the most accurate data. So if you pick a radar sweep 
a radar site way too far from the cell that you're tracking, you're not going to get the right information. So you can see how clearly now areas like in and around Ocoee, Altamont Springs into Seminole County, Longwood, Winter Springs, uh, Sanford just on the that north kind of the leading edge of what is going to be a pretty stormy next few hours. So just wanted to show you outside of that warned area. But once again, the reason why we are covering uh, broadcast uh, programming right now is because of this. Again, that tornado warning in effect until 115. Already hearing the lightning strikes right over the studio as well. Uh, once again, but now those are the areas that we're watching pretty closely. Let me just pop up Veloc. Oh, actually, Jonathan has Velocity, so I'll toss it over to him because it seems like he's all prepped with that yeah. main zone. And one important thing to notice, can, uh, mm -hmm. to note, Candace, the worst part of the storm is now outside of the tornado warning. So while you're still in the tornado warning in Benel officially, the worst part of this storm is now getting ready to cross over I-95 here in Flagler County. That's going to be that yellow line right there. So this is going to be up in just a few minutes in Beverly Beach. We are not under a tornado warning in Beverly Beach. The Weather Service sometimes does put a tornado possible tag when they issue a severe thunderstorm warning because the rotations maybe not as impressive as what it was before. So they extended a severe thunderstorm warning out. We certainly still have rotation and at the very least look at this bright green color. That is wind gusts of anywhere from 60 to 70 miles an hour just outside of Beverly Beach. Now right here, this is the coastline. So we are almost done with this, but we still have a few more minutes to go until this cell is uh, completely off of our coast and we'll transition again to be tracking and pinpointing those other storms that follow. As Candace mentioned, now all of Central Florida under the tornado watch because we have a history now of these storms getting a little rowdy in, in north of Central Florida and uh, St. John's. We've actually had that uh, confirmed touchdown. But again, here this is getting ready to cross over I-95. So if anybody is watching or getting ready to drive through Flagler County, the rain is torrential. Candace has been showing you that. But now we have the potential for that rain wrap tornado in there as well. I don't know if anybody's at the desk to try to find uh, some traffic cameras along I-95 in Flagler County to see what is actually going on out there. But uh, you see that green color now. So here we go. So some of the rotation is getting off of our coast. Here's Beverly Beach again, very broad rotation. So you might see the clouds swirling around. You don't want to be outside, so I hope you're not seeing the clouds swirl around. But again, uh, Flagler Beach into Beverly Beach. Uh, this is just getting ready to get out of or get into you guys as it has now left the tornado warning. Have they extended that tornado warning to include uh, Beverly Beach by chance or Flagler Beach? Um, they have not they just have yet. Not yet. It okay. seems like they're just reissuing at this point. There's a severe thunderstorm warning still for areas in Benel, but as of now, that polygon has not been extended. Awesome, and there's what it looks like. That's gonna be I-95 in Flagler County. Thank you guys for bringing that up. Look at all the water there. This is gonna be looking north, mile marker 284 if you are familiar with that area. And again, you can just see the sheets of rain there in the distance uh, as the very strong wind at the very least uh, just crossed I-95. And this is gonna be heading toward the beaches of Flagler County, Beverly Beach, Flagler Beach, some very nasty stuff. Again, we are still technically in that tornado warning in Benel. It's blinking there on the screen. It is uh, yet to come back down, I don't think. So you still might be having some notifications on your phone, but I can tell you that the worst part of this storm here, all these bright colors here are, uh, are are just to the east of that tornado warning. Candace, and you, can, you can tell you can tell on the on the rain as well, not just in the wind detector, but also on the live radar. I just want to let you know that we do have a storm report coming in from emergency management about Flagler County. Uh, we've been getting wind gusts now about 53 in East Palm Coast. Okay. Um, this is from the Skywarn net there. So we certainly have it. And Jonathan, you were saying, you know, we did have that confirmed tornado uh, there in uh, St. Augustine. So these cells certainly have that potential. And we're also tracking another one over Hillsborough. It's blinking that, uh, that bright purple there in, over the Tampa Bay area. So as we were talking about it, that it fired up right when you were saying that these storms have the potential. When it's bright blinking purple like that, that just means that whether it's the radar confirmed or someone on the ground has been able to confirm it. So this line, not only does it have history, it's currently spinning up, uh, again, those confirmed uh, tornadoes on the ground locally here again that's in Tampa but all of that is all that energy is continuing to push its way into East Central Florida and we're currently seeing that at this at this point in time let's zoom back in so uh, Jonathan was showing you oh, there it is they just discontinued it it looks like they just continued it as of 115. 
All right, we're getting the thumbs up from Jonathan as well. He's confirming it there on the computer. So once again, we do have a uh, tornado watch that has now in is now involving all of areas of I backed it here into beach forecast. We do have a tornado watch. There's that's the graphic I wanted to show you real quick before I toss it back to regular programming it is now extended for you guys in Seminole County, Orange and Osceola County. So now the only spots without the tornado watch until three o'clock is Brevard County of the moment we get any more warnings. Tornado warnings we will make sure to bring it to you live here and of course on clickorlando.com. This severe weather alert is sponsored by Renewal by Anderson. Alrighty, guys, so you were just watching coverage uh, on News 6 out of Central Florida. If you're not from this area on the YouTube stream with meteorologist Candace Campos, uh, the tornado warning has been allowed to expire in Flagler County. We're now going to take you back to the west. And if you heard us talking about we had the extension of the tornado watch to include Orange County and to include... Uh, Osceola County as well. We do have a confirmed tornado north of Tampa. So let's get you out to Tampa now. Uh, this purple flashing box means that the tornado has either been confirmed by radar and, or uh, is seen by somebody else. So let's let's get in here. That might the worst of this might be out of the box now. I'm just getting sitting back down into the Tampa data because. Um, I was working on the Flagler County cell with Candace, but let's take it. There's a huge, severe thunderstorm warning area uh, that extends from about the villages just outside of Leesburg and then all the way uh, just to the west of Claremont. Okay, so all of that now has been allowed to come down. So that is a good news. That is good news. We just had a nice clean radar sweep. Uh, so now we do not have any warnings just like that and just make sure the computer just didn't go haywire but i think that we have seen all of those storms all of the warnings come down Okay, so if you're just joining us uh, on YouTube, on ClickOrlando.com, on News 6 Plus, welcome. We're unfortunately not talking about something cool like the eclipse on Monday. We're tracking severe weather. Some of these have a history of producing tornadoes. We've at least had two confirmed tornadoes, uh, one around the Tampa area and then one north of St. Augustine in St. John's County over the last hour and a half. We've had several other tornado warnings. We've not got confirmation if there have been any touchdowns um, with those warned storms just yet. Uh, but nonetheless, a really nasty line of thunderstorms continues to push through uh, North Florida into Central Florida and then into the Gulf Coast of Florida uh, as we continue to watch the, this nasty line of thunderstorms coming on through. Um, 
just looking at some of the comments, looking at some of the things. We have a new severe thunderstorm warning that just popped up. This is going to include downtown Tampa, although we're mostly out of this. Let me get back to the Tampa radar as that's where we have the nastiest storms right now. This includes Lakeland. This includes Lakeland Heights. Um, and uh, this is just to the west of Brandon. This uh, the worst of this stuff is going to be right up on Mango. This is where this is all the junk or the mess, if you will, that we just had a confirmed tornado kind of dissipate north of Tampa. So again, this line has a history of producing some very nasty storms. Uh, the wind here by Zephyr Hills. I know we had a few people on the live stream before uh, around the Zephyr Hills area. It's gusting to about 60 miles an hour around Plant City. Uh, into Zephyr Hills around Mango and Brandon. So again, make sure you want to get back inside here. Nothing severe or strong at this time in Orange County, but we do have some very heavy rain. Let me turn the lightning back on. I had that off so that we could see some of the uh, rotation within those cells. But this now hanging around Okoe, Pine Hills, we have some thunder and lightning. Uh, and Apopka, people had mentioned there um, that they came on through. They were really kind of just the really windy for just a few few short minutes and then it kind of dissipated that's some good news there uh orla vista into windermere oak ridge dr phillips we're going to be up in a little bit some of that heavy rain coming through um dr phillips right now closing in on the i4 corridor let me try to bring up let's see here that's what it looks like we are pointed to the east in orlando so we still have some brightening if this camera was pointed to the west uh, in downtown Orlando, we would notice some very dark clouds and probably the heavy rain already starting to slide through. That's a look at Port Canaveral. Uh, that's a look at Daytona Beach. I'm not sure what direction that camera is pointed, but it looks dark. It's probably the cell uh, that is exiting Flagler County. Um, really, really ugly stuff that we were just tracking in Flagler County. Hope everybody's okay in Flagler County, we had some minor reports of damage, nothing too crazy at this point uh, from Flagler County anyway. So if anybody has seen anything, um, post that in the comments. Again, when you can do so safely, that is my number one concern. I don't want anybody to go out and looking for it. I know it might be exciting, but again, you want to make sure you're staying safe, especially with all the heavy rain around, that it's not uh, the best time to go uh, to go look at, look at that. All right, got a report from Orlando. It's really dark right now. Uh, hey, Lindy, thank you so much for joining in on the stream. I appreciate that. I will pass that along to Candice. Um, is Cape Coral going to see anything? Cape Coral is going to be just a little bit later on, and that severe threat should be... Uh, should be winding down for Cape Coral. I will zoom out and see. Yeah, we can't tell now because we're, let me change to the Tampa radar. Most of your storms are still out, way out at sea. They're way back here. So you're a couple of hours away from dealing uh, with the potential for some nasty, nasty stuff. And yeah, let me get that click out of here.
All right, so we're watching these storms come in uh, off of the Gulf Coast. All the tornado warnings right now have been allowed to expire. We have one giant severe thunderstorm warning that extends from about uh, Bradenton, just north of Sarasota. It rolls right on through the east side of St. Pete and then into the Tampa area. This includes Lakeland just to the west of Bartow. Yeah, I wanted to mute it so I didn't annoy you guys with uh, with that clicking noise. I had to switch the, the one router source off, so I didn't want to annoy you with that. So I had to mute the mic. Yeah, Jay for real had mentioned, he said, it's just me as the weather always worse around the villages or used to. They have poor ground level radar coverage too. They do. Hopefully soon, uh, we're going to have, uh, the, the state had put in a lot of money to get a mesh radar for this area, and that's going to help to close the gap. So it's going to really come in handy right up in here where we really need some extra radar coverage um, it's also the case in southwest Florida, though. I don't know what the plans are for that. But um, nonetheless, when that mode or when that network gets built and gets operational, it is going to um, it is going to it's going to be really, really nice. Yeah, so Riverview may have had a, a tornado touchdown. It was right around that area where there was a confirmed tornado. Let me see if there's an actual... So there it was reported as a water spout moving on shore, uh, which would then, uh, then turn into a, a, a tornado. That was just south of Citrus Park, uh, Rocky Creek, the Tarpon area just out of the northwest of Tampa, and then there was that confirmed tornado warning as a result of that that came out of Tampa Bay. So um, with all likelihood, yes, I, I don't have the confirmation there that actually went on through Riverview, but uh, it was very, very close. Um, okay, so we're going to look at this. This is kind of nasty. Right down in here south of Tampa. Now, we're, we were just talking about... Um, where we were just talking about uh, the radar coverage being too far away uh, in parts of Lake County. Now we're getting a little bit too close, but this is a concerning radar image. Let me get back to, this is going to be just south of Tampa. We have a supercell that's kind of hiding in here. A little bit of a hook. The radar image is a little messed up because of how close it is to the radar now. But um, we're going to watch this closely here because he's trying to hide in this line that's one of the modes of severe weather are these kind of embedded supercell thunderstorms that are in the line so we're going to watch this closely so again if you are let's zoom in here this is going to be i-75 in hillsborough county this is going to be south of brandon south of bloomingdale uh closer to ruskin Greater Sun Center. We're going to be watching closely. We have a little bit of rotation right here. Let me mark this off with... Just mark that off. I'm going to just do some dissection here to see where that is. It's kind of in a weird spot. We're going to watch that. Let's get back closer down uh, to the Bradenton, Palmetto area. Let's just check these guys out. So far, it all looks like it's going in one direction. It 
Bruce, if you hear anything else, let me know where. We were tracking a tornado warrant storm through Flagler County. Have not heard of any reports of it actually touching down just yet. But if you do hear... Um, if you do hear of any spots or see any any damage, let me know in the chat there. And if anybody has any pictures, you can submit them to clickorlando.com slash pins. If... Uh, if um, you can do so safely, that's the important things. Aubrey, we can't. We can get super bad ones. We're not in the environment today to get the really, really big ones. But yeah, we've had big time ones, EF threes, EF fours before in the state's history. So um, just keep that in mind. We are not though in the environment to produce those big time ones. Um, so yeah, so far that I know of, we've had two confirmed tornadoes today. One north of Tampa and then one northwest of St. Augustine and St. John's County. Uh, those are the two confirmed that we've had today. Keith, the 37 said, saw Twitter on Twitter, the video of a uh, tornado in St. Augustine. And that would be the one. That would be one of them that we have that confirmed. As of right now, we do not have any tornado warnings uh, for anywhere in Florida. That includes the Apollo Beach area. We're watching that closely in the other severe threat area we don't have warnings in ohio either that's where there was another severe weather risk today uh the polk county and the bartow area specifically we are under a severe thunderstorm warning right now until two o'clock um so that's another 30 minutes we'll see if they extend that right now we have some of the nasty storms rolling through about brandon and bloomingdale just to the west of polk county um but Lakeland, we're under that. Bartow, we're outside of that right now. Let me turn on the actual radar. I just had the velocity mode. And that's what it looks like. So the nastiest stuff is to the west. They may have the opportunity. Um, they may have the opportunity to keep, hold their, their punch, if you will. Um, they haven't really showed the signs of weakening like they showed on, on last Thursday as they moved in uh, moved in off the Gulf of Mexico. You're welcome, Judy. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate that. Uh, Daytona Beach area at the moment. Let's go in and, and check on Daytona. I don't believe so. We have the rain around, of course, but there's nothing severe at this time. Just a couple of lightning strikes. A little windy. Um, uh, Florida dash cam. Uh, for the storm search, and that is a good question. On the golf side especially, um, on the golf side especially, that's where we're worried about because of how strong the winds are for a little bit of that tidal flooding. So, yeah, keep that in mind as well. Um, the Warrior Cat. Yeah, normally we're looking at the 1 to EF2 type tornadoes. That's normally because we are used to getting the more tropical tornadoes, especially if we have a landfalling tropical storm. But every now and then, especially in an El Nino year, which we are in, we can really get the bigger ones because we have the extra uh, wind shear around brought on by the subtropical jet stream. And that's when we tend to get the bigger ones. We saw that earlier this year in the panhandle. Um, but it's it's about this time, late winter, early spring, that we have the opportunity anyway to see those bigger ones. Now, again, this isn't the right setup that we're going to get like the crazy long track ones or the crazy big ones. These are more of the short-lived but still damaging ones um, that can come up at any time as well. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so all that stuff. All right, so uh, just getting handed some information here. Um, so anybody that has kids in school uh, in Flagler County, 
Uh, Flagler school buses will be operating on an estimated 20-minute delay today due to the storm currently coming through Flagler County. So just keep that in mind. Um, transportation team anticipates some slight delays for bus riders. So again, that is coming out of Flagler County, uh, Flagler County schools. So just keep that keep that in mind that you might be uh, seeing that as well um, for your kids to come home from school. So and and we can end up seeing that it, being in a tornado watch and being in some really nasty storms that might have some ripple effects for other districts. We'll pass that along if we if we hear that as well. But uh, certainly for Flagler County, expect about a twenty minute delay as there was a very nasty storm, tornado warn storm. Um, as well. Hey, Jennifer Bowman in Zellwood. Let's go check up on Zellwood. We're going to get uh, the worst of the weather over the next hour-ish. We have that actually sliding in as we speak, and that might be why you're asking about that. Um, here we go. The worst of it's coming through now. I don't. I mean, it's going to get windy. It's going to get a little loud. The good news is I don't see any rotation. Um, I'm not seeing anything too concerning with the wind at this point. I don't believe we're even under a... Yeah, no warning. Um, at this point. So right now we are good. We are good. Kim says, uh, Kim Harrison says my son's high school in Daytona just released early. So there's a, uh, for anybody there, Daniel says sitting here in Orlando international boarding starts at three fifteen. How fun should our liftoff be? Oh boy. All right. Let's see. I think they might have had a, I know there was a airport, Yeah, there was an. Let me check on this. There was an airport a weather warning issued for the Orlando International Airport and the Orlando Executive until two o'clock. Let me see what time you say the flight was leaving. I think I lost. I lost the comment. Oh, hey, Pagey, what's going on? Oh, 3.15. Okay, so you should be okay. Uh, it might be a little bumpy getting up, but the worst of these storms should be getting out of here. We gotta, we have a good two hours um, to get that, although it might, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a delay because it does look like they might be doing a, a ground stop here. Um, Thomas says there's a ground stop in Tampa. Sure, I will look at Winter Park. So let's get into Winter Park. Right now, it's run-of-the-mill gusty downpours. Maybe a, I don't even think there's a lightning strike around Winter Park right now. It's a little heavier in Azalea Park. But then we'll back out, and we will show you that we do have some of that nasty stuff uh, coming in back off towards our west. So we may be getting another round through. Hey, j Dog in Howie in the Hills. Let's get you a look into Lake County. Let me zoom out and get my bearing straight. Here we go. We'll get you back into Howie in the Hills. And, and all this stuff is coming through. So there's Lake Apopka. Howie in the Hills right now. I know I can get you to pop up. I get you to pop up all the time. Sometimes it takes the map a second to get you to come through. There's Acid. There we go. There's Howie in the Hills. Um, right now, just some of that heavy rain. We have more coming through, though, coming out of Leesburg and Hawthorne. The new update... Just make sure they haven't reissued a warning. Special weather statement for Volusia County. No, um, through, uh, Candace just sent me an update here for the Flagler County Fire Rescue. Handful of trees down in the county, not specific there. Um, so again, that storm that we were tracking there on, uh, on the air a little bit, of, about an hour or two ago, well, 30 minutes ago. Uh, has produced a little bit of damage. So far, nothing significant. Hopefully those trees aren't down on homes or anything. All right, let's take a look at Plant City in 20 minutes. That's what's coming in Plant City. So some super, super heavy rain. 
Um, I don't know where your family's coming from, but they are gonna if they're coming from the west, then they are in some really nasty heavy rain right now. Uh, if they're coming from the east, they're gonna run into it. If they're coming out of uh, CI four from Lakeland or something like that, um, but there's the super heavy rain getting ready to roll in uh, to the Plant City area, and then eventually Winston and Lakeland in Polk County. Okay, so Tim Curran is saying on the Just Weather Channel this, uh, for his update on the St. Augustine tornado, no reports of injuries so far, minor damage to roofing tiles, small trees snapped, some fences blown over and apart. Awesome. Okay, so they're coming from the, from the east of Lakeland, so yeah, they might want to, they're going to get into some real, real heavy stuff. Um... So Nicole is asking on the ClickOrlando.com YouTube channel. When does this all get out of here? Let me... I was going to show you guys the future radar a little bit ago. And then we got back into uh, a couple of tornado warnings. Okay, so real quick. Uh, every time I try to show you the future. I mean, it's not the actual future. I wish it was uh, the actual future. Uh, we keep on getting warnings, so we do have a new warning now for Flagler County. This is a severe thunderstorm warning again for Flagler County. So let me just check that out real quick, and then we'll try to get into some of the future radar stuff. And it's going to be with this mess here. Um, all right, so the FAA, thank you, Donovan, for all of these updates. The FAA just tweeted, FAA Command Center update, T-storms in Florida are causing delays at MCO and a ground stop at Tampa. We're slowing down flights to get to your destination safely and as efficiently as possible. Then they say monitor fly.faa.gov for the latest airport info. So you know when the FAA gets involved on the Twitter, uh, that there's, there's going to be some significant issues there. And we thought that might be the case, of course, when there's a ground stop in Tampa and we have nasty storms rolling through the Orlando area. Uh, the flight routes get all kind of messed up. Uh, just the way that the airlines have to fly north and south in Florida. And when you have things jammed up in Tampa and in Orlando, that's it's going to be an issue. So just an early heads up um, that you might be running into some issues if you're trying to fly out of MCO and Tampa and some of the other regional airports as well. Hey, what's going on, Tiffany? Hope you are well. All right, uh, Luna's asking for uh, update in Seminole County. We'll take you to Seminole County. Okay, uh, new severe thunderstorm morning for Belusia County now. This is going to go until 2.30. Maybe I'm jinxing it. Every time I try to show you a severe, uh, the future radar, we keep on getting warnings that we have to check up on. So maybe I should just shut my mouth. Okay, Tiffany says, windy and dark in Kissimmee, St. Cloud, also six miles from the airport. I do, Keith, 37. My Twitter is at Jonathan Kegis. I can put that in the, uh, in the thing. That's what the Twitter is. If you want to follow over there, thank you, Donovan, for all of these updates. Okay, uh, per Candice Campos, the meteorologist that you may have seen if you were watching the live coverage uh, a little bit ago when we broke into programming. And sorry about that, by the way. I know it's it's soaps time, but we only do that again when we have to. That's our FCC uh, responsibility. Thank you, thank you. I I lost my word. Respons. Thank you, thank you, Frank. In, in, in the background. I appreciate that. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's why we cut in. We don't like to do it. Okay, on the Just Weather feed, let's keep it easy in the chat. One of these, uh, let's get a moderator here, but let's keep it easy. We're going to start kicking people out of this room. Uh, we're trying to have the, the weather conversation here, and I see some people getting a little chippy with each other. So, let's be nice out there. Let's do that. We're going to have to shut the commenting off and ruin some of the the good conversations that we're having. So we're not kids here. All right, so some good news. Uh, Tornado Watch in Sumter County has been allowed to expire. So that is pulled down early as we went through um, 
all that as well. And now she missed the Twitter link. There you go. That's the Twitter. Cool. All right. Paul says, uh, 20 December, Paul, they say he's coming over from uh, the UK on Monday to Kissimmee. The weather looks great after this into the weekend. It's looking awesome. We just got to get through a little bit of a bumpy ride here over the next uh, couple of hours, and then we can get these out of here, and we'll, we'll see all that, okay? Um, hope you stay safe as well. Let's take a look at Manatee County. Let's go to the Tampa radar. We are under that severe thunderstorm morning in Manatee County. Uh, this is sliding through Bradenton, South Bradenton, into Bayshore Gardens right now. Uh, Sarasota also, we, we're not in a warning, but we do have some nasty storms um, off in the distance getting ready to come on shore. Oh, I just found out that you can put people in timeout in the chat room. Yes. Oh, we're going to use this. So that guy's in a five-minute timeout now. Okay, that's on, the, that's on the Just Weather page. Wow. That's awesome. We're going to have fun with this. All right. All right, Gary says winds are starting to pick up over here in... Arkansas heavy rain as well so that's going to be the best um that's going to be the best uh where the winds are cranking up behind the storm the main storm I'll show you that if we ever get out of these warnings kind of swirling back out uh the the worst of that storm is heading toward the Great Lakes area or the center of that storm I should say so that's why the winds are picking up um in that area as well All right, and Candace had just texted me. Okay, we're we're watching. Uh, still actively. Okay, so the sorry, the Apollo Beach area. Let's check in on Apollo Beach, and the worst stuff in Apollo Beach should be over, or should be coming to an end shortly. So we should be getting out of that. Um, And back in Flagler County, we have a concerning cell. This is where we have the severe thunderstorm warning. Let's get back up to the Jacksonville radar. We have a few. I mean, Flagler County getting pounded again. We just had that tornado warning. And there's a little bit of rotation here just to the northeast of Pearson. This is, I mean, almost a carbon copy of what we were kind of tracking before. Um, the rotation, it's not impressive. But it's something that we're going to be watching. This severe thunderstorm warning for Flagler County goes until 2 o'clock. Thank you for the, for the, the reporting of that guy, too. All right, I have a question about Oviedo. Let's go check a, take a look at Oviedo. Those storms should be off to your west still. Um, they should be off to your west still. Kind of both to the east and west. You're kind of like in a bubble of dry weather in Oviedo, but it is really windy in between. Um, so we have the strongest of the weather, the worst of the weather, kind of moving through Acetula right now. These are all moving from west to east, so... 
we're going to have a little more rain coming in in the next uh, 20-ish minutes. And then we're going to have uh, some scattered thunderstorms again that could be on the stronger side pushing through. And I would say about an hour. So that's going to put it right on schedule uh, to what Candace Campos was talking about earlier this morning if you were watching her on New 6 Mornings. Um, right in that three-ish o'clock ballpark. And again, we're going to be in and out of a few scattered showers, downpours, maybe a rumble of thunder, but the worst of that stuff is, is going through before. Okay, uh, Tornado Watch has been canceled for Marion County. And again, that's this is the all clear. So we're now getting the all clear from west to east and where we've already had the storms come through. So we pretty much have the all clear from St. Pete all the way up to about Marineland in Flagler County. And then to the south and east of that, that is where we are still watching for the potential anyway for the next hour or so uh, for storms to get a little rowdy as they work from west to east. Clearwater already was affected. So, yeah, we are good to go in Clearwater. Just started pouring in Eustace, and there's all the nasty weather around Eustace. No warnings right now, but it is coming down. A lot of lightning also. Ocala, we are in the clear. Tornado watch has come down from Marion County. The storms are over. May have a few like little teeny tiny showers sliding back through as the rest of this comes through, but now we should be on a clearing trend. Once these storms come through, we will be seeing uh, things get better. All right, into the DeBerry area. We've got some of the stronger stuff. Again, no warnings for this part of Volusia County anyway. Orange City and Orange City Hills, Deltona, Enterprise. That's where we have the heaviest stuff. In the Lake Helen, DeLand, it's on the quieter side, but we do still have some junk. This is the stuff that's over Eustis and Tavares and Umatilla right now. That is what is going to be sliding through um, over the next little bit of time. Apollo Beach is not clear from the tornado watch, but you're going to be in the clear. That'll eventually come down. All right, KJ in, where did you say? where Lake Mary. It did have a question about Seminole County earlier, so let's go check that out. Here's where the storms are coming from. These are kind of sliding into the north, uh, from the southwest into the northeast. So Heathrow getting some rain right now. Lake Mary, we're going to start to pick things up a little bit. Uh, nothing too wild. There are no warnings or anything, but we are, the strongest stuff is probably about, 20 to 30 minutes away. All this stuff is sliding through. Let me kind of push that there and show you. The heaviest stuff is going to be sliding just to your north in the short term, and then the stuff that we have back by Lake Apopka is sliding through. Also, again, if you had plans maybe to go walk around Lake Apopka or head in that direction, uh, there's some really dark clouds on the other side, on the Lake County side of Lake Apopka. Uh, would not go walking there. Again, there's a couple of lightning strikes uh, around Montverde into the just north of Oakland. So just keep that in mind. We've got some nasty stuff uh, coming out of Howie in the Hills and Astatula. Uh, mascot, Claremont, and Groveland. We had some people watching from uh, the Groveland mascot area. We're about to have the all clear. Shortly anyway.
watching that as well, uh, so, uh, Keith or 37 had mentioned about concern about the rotation that was coming in on shore uh, Hillsborough earlier. The good news is now is that we're, we've not really seen the continuation of a lot of that rotation that was coming through. Uh, we're scanning this to the west of Lakeland. It's all moving in one direction. The wind is. And that is that is good. That gives me some hope there. Uh, in the Zephyr Hills area, at least the good news is now is that the strongest of the weather is out of here. Okay, so you should be you should be good to go. Um, Kissimmee, we should be on a weakening trend. And again, the tornado watch was extended to include Orange, Seminole, and Osceola County, but uh, for the most part, the storms are exhibiting a weakening trend. CW Sidham says appears to be breaking up in northwest. Uh, northwest of Orlando. Yeah, so I'm cautiously optimistic now. We might be able to watch this weakening trend here over the next few hours. Uh, this warning, and it's going to be interesting to see here. We'll see if the weather service agrees um, that this is going to be, this warning here is going to be allowed to expire at 2 o'clock. Uh, the Haines City area have a lot of questions about Haines City. Um, let's put a tracker on that for you. These are kind of sliding to the north. They're not moving that far. They're that fast. About right there. I mean, they'll be in Polk City in about 10, 15 minutes. Auburndale in about 15 minutes. Haines City probably in about 30 to 45 minutes. Those will be through. Um, so all that stuff. Uh, you got it, Paula. I, I love Lake County, so any any time I can talk about, I mean, good stuff about Lake County, not when there's when there's bad stuff coming through, but Lake County is awesome. I love that whole part of Central Florida. Uh, will it hit Orlando, Disney, or will it miss it? So Disney's about right in here. It is sliding through. Let me put a put the motion on it for you. Let me back up the time so we can see that motion. It's, yeah, you know, you're going to get a little bit of rain. I don't think you're going to get the worst of it, though. Hey, what's going on to Claremont? If you guys are watching on the uh, Just Weather page as well and you're tuning in from Central Florida, I hope you guys watch News 6. And if you don't, I hope you do. Uh, so thank you guys for finding us on the Just Weather pa uh, page as well. Uh, but we have you covered from a weather and news perspective all over Central Florida. Again, that's WKMG News 6, the CBS affiliate out of uh, the Central Florida area, the greater Orlando area as well. So I hope you guys tune in to News 6. All right, so getting some questions about the Four Corners area. So here we are in Four Corners, and we do have some strong storms to our west. I, don't, I think we're going to miss out on the... Uh, um, on the on the best side, ha, Keith. I wish there was a good story. No, it's lame. Just doing some work and tripped. I know. I probably shouldn't admit to that. I wish it was a cool story though. You know, Keith or thirty seven. I will offer you an alternative if you can't if you can't that uh, if you can't get us. You should download New Six Plus. It's a free download. And uh, you can watch the newscasts and our original content uh, for free right there. So if you're outside of the signal anyway, uh, we do cover Polk County a lot, even though it's technically Tampa side where you can get the Tampa stations. We do cover, uh, we do get into um, Polk County. So you should download New 6 Plus. And you can watch, if you uh, are a fan of the weather, a show called WeatherWise that runs live every day at 8 to 8.30 in the morning where you can get your weather information um, as well so download new six plus that goes for anybody too if you want to if you want to get in on all that stuff we have a lot of stuff especially someone just even took the words out of my mouth there as we get into hurricane season we're going to have a lot of that content there so that you can get uh, some great information again to just search new six plus on your smart tv on roku on apple tv fire tv all those other tvs that are out there um yeah download that i think you'll be very, very happy. Departures. All right. 
Awesome. So thank you, Donovan. For we have an update here from MCO. The departures to Orlando International are grounded uh, due to thunderstorms. So that's if you are coming here. So that's if you're going to be picking up family members uh, coming to the Orlando International Airport. There's a probability of an extension there, about thirty to sixty percent. They say um, departure delays are. It's an average of sixty minutes and increasing due to thunderstorms. Okay, so that is going to be uh, significant. If you are trying to get out of the Orlando International Airport, you have delays. And if you're waiting on family to come back, if they have not left their airport uh, of departing, their departing airport, um, they're going to be a little late in all likelihood. So thank you, Donovan, for the information there. I know we had a lot of questions about MCO uh, in the greater Orlando area. That goes for some of the uh, Orlando area as well. Awesome, Linz. Thank you so much. In Temple Terrace, hit that subscribe button because when we have storms in Florida, we, uh, we do that. So if you are interested in staying up whenever uh, the storms threaten Florida, and especially in hurricane season, we are getting a lot of questions there. I hate to bring up that, that season as we're, I mean, we're almost there. We all know it as, as Floridians. Um, but if you want to stay updated on, on the weather, if you're watching on the Just Weather page or on the Click Orlando page, we're going to have you cover this hurricane season. Hopefully it's talking about storms that stay out the sea. Um, but again, you're going to find it from a science and uh, meteorological background rather than kind of clickbaity stuff. So we, we got you covered. Promise you guys. You got it, Sonny. Yeah, no, I, I, I wish that the signal went further into, into Polk County as well, um, but I'm glad you can find uh, New 6 Plus. Again, it really is a cool tool, and we have uh, in the mornings um, from 7.30 to 8.30, we have original content to bring you news, weather, and traffic. I have a show called WeatherWise. That's at 8 o'clock. It's a really cool show, and we can get really hyper-local with your weather and then talk about... Um, and then talk about uh, really cool things that are happening with the weather, whether it's uh, severe weather or snow and all that stuff. So that's uh, that's awesome stuff that we can bring you on New 6 Plus. So even if you're not in Florida and you're watching, uh, download New 6 Plus. It's really cool. And we have rocket launches live uh, that we show there too. So that that's cool. We do talk about snow, Florida dash cam. When it's really cool and uh, we can show you that elsewhere, of course, we don't really get the snow in Florida. You guys know that, but all that stuff. All right. Let's see here. You got it. Yeah, some questions about when hurricane season starts. Some newcomers to Florida. That is officially on June 1st. We can get stuff in, in May. Typically, again, they don't get really, really uh, concerning or really strong until we get deeper into uh, the season. I did say snow. I know. I love snow. I'm in the wrong place. We're out of Central Florida again. But uh, we, we can talk about it dynamically in a way and watch it from afar. Isn't that the best? You don't have to shovel it. We can still deal with the sunshine here. Hey, well, we got you covered in Polk County for sure. Um, Tim, he's asking what radar apps and websites. If you want to get real... Uh, nitty gritty and real good with the with the couplets and that stuff. I would recommend Radar Scope. You have to pay for it, but there's really good radar data in there. Um, and if anybody wants to stay updated on the weather from the Central Florida area, uh, the Pinpoint Weather app that is a free tool. It's a great tool. There's an interactive radar on there. Uh, you get push alerts from real meteorologists as well. So all that stuff. Alrighty, and I think at that point, guys, we are warning free right now, so we can all have a uh, round of applause for that. We're gonna get into the future radar, and then we're gonna we'll take a a, a break here as we watch these storms. We're gonna kind of catch the bearing here or get our bearings again as we roll through this. So let me show you the future radar real quick, so that we can plan out the rest of the afternoon. Hey, Chad, that's where I'm from, too. That's why I love the snow. So there's the update on the tornado watch until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and we're gradually going to see the counties drop out of this as um, we roll right on through this. So 
that's a good thing. Here's the bigger system. People had mentioned it was windy in Kentucky. Our big surface low is right here, and then our cold front is draped right on through there. And that's why we are dealing with the severe storms today um, and all that stuff. Uh, Brad Brownie, I'm not sure where you're tuning in from. Um, all that stuff. Uh, Florida Dash Cam, I am from just east of uh, downtown Pittsburgh, so just outside of the city of Pittsburgh. That's where I'm from. Hey, thanks, Alicia. I appreciate that. No, oh, you got it. All right, so let me get, although I said I wouldn't do this because every time I said we're going to get the future radar, new warnings pop up. But here we go. So this is 2 o'clock. I think we're, it's running a little bit behind schedule. And I do think the intensity here, where are we at? I, I think it's about an hour behind on the timeline uh, future radar is. So this is about where we are right now. I think... So I think we'll just subtract an hour. So here we go at 4 o'clock. So this is, I think, where we'll be in about an hour from now uh, towards East Orange County uh, into the Sanford area where we were out last night. Great night for WKMG Hits the Road uh, at Hollerbox last night. Great stuff in Sanford. Um, we've got everybody covered in Central Florida. But that's going to continue to push to the east. And then there's about 4 to 5 o'clock tonight. And the nasty stuff gets into Brevard County. And then as we move into 6 o'clock tonight, we are getting this out of Central Florida, mainly into Indian River County and all that stuff. Hey, Amanda, good to see you uh, from Lakeland. Uh, and if you guys are new, finding the streams for the first time, whether that be on Just Weather or on Click Orlando, we got you covered. Just Weather, more, of a, more weather content from around uh, the country as well. Oh, awesome, Sage. She's from uh, Western PA as well, in between Erie and Pittsburgh. That is a great area. Love that stuff. Um, but if you want to stay updated as we get into hurricane season, uh, hopefully nothing comes our way this year. Uh, would really love that not to happen. Uh, we, of course, know we've been down an awful hand in Florida over the past few years. But if we have anything brewing out there, we're going to let you know. We're going to do it again without the fear, without the hype, without that garbage that's out there. I look at it from a purely science, meteorological standpoint. And to keep you guys updated, what you need to know. So if you like that stuff, again, from a national perspective, hit that subscribe button on the Just Weather page. We'd love to have you on on board for that and if you want uh, the florida centric news and weather updates hit subscribe on the wkmg click orlando.com page we would love to have you on board and again if you are in the greater central florida area or just love weather content uh find us on new six plus download that on the smart TV, on any of the smart t devices, the Apple TVs, the Roku's and stuff, because you can get the live newscasts on New 6 Plus if you're just outside of our signal, because we do get into Polk County, and um, we do talk about Polk County on the weather front, um, even though the signal that we have to get on the traditional TV doesn't get there. So download New 6 Plus, and we also have, uh, that's for free, by the way, and we also have the original content, and I personally do a show called Weatherwise. I was talking about this earlier, where we can really talk about uh, the hyper-local stuff, and we talk about weather across the country and some cool weather phenomenon, and I share your pictures a lot, and that's going to be the episode coming up uh, tomorrow, uh, the weather pins of the week. You can submit pictures if you have anything from the eclipse, if you have anything from... Uh, the weather that came through today and cool clouds or anything like that or damage. I hope nobody saw damage today, um, but you can submit that to clickorlando.com slash pins. It is the best way to get um, any kind of weather photos or photos in general uh, to us that we can show. All righty, guys, we are going to take a little bit of a break. I do have uh, a wind question here. You see there, too, these are current winds. Uh, these are winds gusting to about 40 miles an hour. These are actual ground truth wind reports uh, on... Uh, from the airport, from observing sites there. So about 40 mile per hour gust there in Orlando, about 20 to 30 along the Space Coast. Let me take you out into the future here. Um, that was from before. So this is about where we are right now. And there's 4 o'clock. So we're still going to keep things really gusty uh, through the afternoon and then into the evening. Here we go into tomorrow. So we're still going to be breezy tomorrow. It's not going to be as gusty. Uh, Dennis says, sounds like hurricane gusts and rain in the Sanford, Florida. Yeah, I mean, that's a, we're getting wind gusts of about 40 miles an hour. So, again, that's getting up into that tropical storm force um, realm as well. I would beg to differ about that fear and loathing media. 
but he does do a really, really good job. And I use uh, his site a lot. But no, he's, uh, he's one of the smartest guys on the planet. Hey, what's going on in Claremont, Florida? Alrighty, guys. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to continue to watch this radar. Let's go back and just do one more clean radar sweep. And then we are going to take a little bit of a break while there is nothing threatening out there. Although it is kind of loud across parts of central Florida right now. Let me bring the radar back up so that I can control the radar. And we're just going to go down this line really quick. Let's work out of the Melbourne radar. So some heavy rain around Port Orange, uh, New Smyrna Beach, Lake Helen into Orange City, Deltona, the land. So the land, we're going to have some really nasty stuff coming through uh, in a little bit. Nothing severe right now, nothing damaging, but it is going to get really windy. It's a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder. Same for us into the Altamont Springs, Longwood area, Winter Park, uh, into Wakiva Springs. That's where we're going to see some of that stronger stuff come through. No warnings just yet. Just, just yet. And then here we go into the Kissimmee, Haines City area. That's what we're getting right now. Again, nothing severe. Lakeland, some heavier stuff sliding through. This is moving out of Plant City into Mulberry, into Bartow. Uh, and now this is, uh, again, scattered stuff moving out of Sarasota, out of Bradenton. There is nothing severe, and I am optimistic that we will continue to see this line wind down as it moves towards the I-4 corridor and then as it moves uh, south and east uh, closer to Yeehaw Junction, into Kenansville, into Palm Bay, Mico, Rockledge, all of that along the Space Coast. All righty, guys, we are watching this closely. Thank you so much for tuning in to the live stream. If we have any kind of warnings pop up, we will be back again. If you found this stream helpful and you want to stay updated on the weather, hit that subscribe button for me. Give it a thumbs up, and we'll catch you soon. Again, we talk about all things weather. We'll catch you soon, guys. Thanks so much.